I'm Raj Chengappa from India today and welcome to this special interview with Gautam Adani, chairman of the Adani Group. Gautam Bhai, thank you for speaking to India today. Thank you, Raj, for inviting me. I must say that the growth of the Adani Group has been truly astonishing. In little over a decade, you have become India's largest private sector power producer, port operator, airport operator, consumer gas business, and electric transmission company, apart from being the largest infrastructure developer and generator in renewables. This year, your group has become this country's second largest cement manufacturer, and you are diversifying rapidly into other sectors, including aircraft maintenance, manufacturing, telecom, data center, and logistics, and a whole lot of other areas. But there is even more that you have achieved in 2022. With a personal net worth of $150 billion, you have become the richest Indian, overtaking Mukesh Ambani of Reliance and other stalwarts to the top spot. For your phenomenal growth in terms of both business and in personal wealth, and the impact that you've made to millions across the country, Gautam Bhai, I'm happy to inform you that India Today magazine has declared you as its newsmaker of the year 2022. So congratulations for this recognition. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. Now, Gautam Bhai, when you look back at 2022, what makes this year so special for you? So first of all, thank you, Raj. 2022 was an exceptional year in many ways. We had a successful Adani Wilmar IPO. And thus, Adani Wilmar is becoming the seventh listed company in the group. We have built a business model where we start a business from scratch, make it profitable, and then go public. This IPO was another example of that. We also become India's second largest cement manufacturers when we acquired ACC and Ambuja Cements for around 10.5 billion US dollar from housing. It is the largest acquisition we have ever made. And it is also India's largest ever m and transactions in the infrastructure and a material space. That's very impressive. Now, apart from being the richest Indian and the richest Asian, you're also the world's third richest person. How does it feel to be wealthy? What does money mean to you? See, Rajbhai, these rankings and numbers do not matter to me. These are only media hype. I'm a first generation entrepreneur who had to build everything from scratch. I get my thrills from handling challenges and the bigger they are, the happier I am. For me, the opportunity and ability to make a difference in the lives of people and contribute to the growth and building of the nation is far more satisfying and important than being on some wealth ranking or evaluation raised. I'm thankful to God that he has given me a great opportunity to serve the nation through infrastructure building. Now you talked of happiness. Can you add a little bit? Can you define what really makes you happy? Personally speaking, this was the biggest year of my life. This year, I celebrated my 60th birthday. This personal milestone apart, on this occasion, 
my family committed rupees 60000 crores to the adani foundations to support mainly three social causes which is close to my heart education healthcare and skill development which are foundational for any nation this has given me immense satisfactions and happiness which no professional achievement can ever give so gautam bhai let's explore this further what motivates you when you do business or in life itself as an ordinary man the courage strength resilience and tenacity of the average indians are very inspiring and motivating for me to share with you at the second edition of our green talk series i was greatly moved by the stories of arunima sinha and kiran kanojia two extraordinary women who unfortunately lost their limbs but yet conquered the world arunima climbed mount everest and kiran a blade runner is running marathons both are incredible women and the pride of india they are the real heroes of a naya india their stories moved me so much that i had a tears in my eyes i am truly humbled by their spirit could there be anything more motivating than such courage valor and determinations in the face of adversity seeing their story my belief is further reinforced that there is no machine stronger than human beings such human stories are the biggest source of motivation for me that's truly inspiring i want to turn to business now and let's look at the logic behind your group's phenomenal expansion in infrastructure as well as in new areas i was born in a middle class family and i lived through the 90s 70s and 80s when we had to struggle for bidli sadak and pani that was a time when india had a huge infrastructure deficit in ports airports and many other infrastructure areas in contrast china which also become independent around the same time as india and had lower per capita income than india in 1990 began leapfrogging ahead of india in development all this issue instilled a huge desire in me to do whatever i could do to transform india particularly in infrastructures and make india stronger meanwhile starting from 1991 policy changes created an enabling environment for the entry of the private sector in the infrastructure space this is why i am determined to use every opportunity to build 
of world class infrastructures and facilities for india and indians kathum bhai your phenomenal growth in the past decade has demonstrated that what is your management management style what is your mantra for success see all our businesses are run by our professionals and competent ceos i do not interfere in their day to day functioning my role is limited to formulating a strategy capital allocations and their performance review it is for this reason that i have time to manage such a large and diverse organizations but also incubate several new businesses and also look for a new opportunities for acquisitions now one of the new acquisitions that you have made is taking over the ndtv group now would you follow the same principle of non interference that you have demonstrated in your other group companies and secondly how would you ensure editorial independence see raj on a editorial independence let me say categorically that ndtv will be a credible independent global network with a clear lakshman rekha between management and editorial you can endlessly debate and interpret each and every word of what i am saying as has been done by many but my fundamental point is that the proof of the pudding is in the eating so please allow us some time before you start judging us we will do that and we will see the lakshman rekha that you set between management and editorial and whether that principle that you set will follow but let us also look at another concern that has been raised by some of your critics that the adani group is highly over over leveraged it has a debt of close to 2 lakh crores what gives you the confidence that you can maintain this debt and repay it see raj i must confess that i am greatly surprised by the conversations around our debt we are financially very strong and secure such noises are coming mainly from our two categories the first category is of the people who are not doing deep diving to understand the detailed nuances of debt and finances of company i'm sure if they make an effort to understand the financial statements all the misgivings about debt will disappear however there is second category of people with a vested interest deliberately creating confusion and misunderstanding to tarnish the reputation of the group the fact of the matter is that in the past 9 years our profit has been growing at twice the rate of our debt and because of which our debt to ebitda ratio has come down from 7.6 to 3.2 which is a very very healthy for a large group where most of the companies are in the infrastructure space with a assured and a predictable cash flow unlike in a manufacturing 
It is for this reason that not only national but international rating agencies have rated us equivalent to India's sovereign rating. It is a matter of great pride for me that no other business group in India has as many company as the Adani group which has apps sovereign ratings. Raj, you are well aware that rating agencies and particularly the international ones are a very conservative and stingy in giving rating and they have a very, very rigorous and robust systems and processes of a financial analysis to share with you. It is for this fundamental financial strength of our group that we were able to close the ACC and Amboja cement deal of $10.5 billion in a record time in less than just three months. Now, I need to persist with this questioning because there are also concerns that banks, including public sector banks, have a huge exposure to Adani debt. How do you respond to such concerns? Raj, this is a good question. People raise concerns without verifying the facts. And the fact is, nine years ago, out of our total debt, 86% was lending from Indian banks. But now, the exposure of Indian banks in our total lending is reduced to only a level of 32%. Almost 50% of our borrowing is now through international bonds. You will appreciate that international investors are a very astute and subscribe after proper due diligence and deep study. Gautam Bhai, how would you respond to your critics who say that your rise and your meteoric rise was because of Prime Minister Narendra Modi? See, Prime Minister Modi and myself, both are coming from state of Gujarat. And that makes, makes me the easy target of a such baseless allegations. When I look back at my entrepreneurial journey, I can divide it into a four phases. Many will be surprised to know that it all began during the tenure of Sri Rajiv Gandhi as a Prime Minister. When he first liberalized the exim policy and for the first time several items were brought in the open general license list. That is what helped me to start my export house. But for Rajiv Gandhi, my journey as an entrepreneur would never have taken off. The second big push I got was in 1991 when the duo of Prime Minister Nasir Ravji and the Finance Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji initiated sweeping economic reforms. Just like many other entrepreneurs, I too 
for the beneficiary of those reforms. There is no point in further elaborating on it because so much has been said and written about it. The third turning point for me came in 1995 when Kesube Patel was sworn in as a Gujarat Chief Minister. Until then, all industrial development in Gujarat was only around National Highway 8 from Mumbai to Delhi via cities like Wapi, Ankleswar, Paruj, Silvaza, Vadodara, Surat and Ahmedabad. He was a visionary and a focused on a coastal development. And it was that policy change that took me to Mundra and prompted me to build our first port. The rest, as they say, is history. The fourth turning point was in 2001, when a Gujarat witnessed a massive focus on development under Chief Minister Narendra Modi ji. His policies and their implementations went on to not only change the economic landscape, landscape of the state, but it also brought social transformations and development of previously underdeveloped areas. It also allowed industries and employment to take off like never before. Today, under his able leadership, we are seeing a similar resurgence at the national and international levels, where a new India is now asserting itself. It is unfortunate that such narratives are being pushed against me. As I explained, these allegations are baseless and suffer from a recency bias, seeing our group success through a short term lens. The fact of the matter is that my professional success is not because of any individual leader, but because of the policy and institutional reforms initiated by several leaders and governments during a long period of over three decades. So if you look at the turning points, it appears that it straddles various political parties and spectrum, not necessarily one thing. But you did mention uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, and you've seen his rise being in Gujarat from the chief minister to the prime minister. What would you say is uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's style of leadership? See, Prime Minister Modi ji has provided a visionary and an inspirational leadership to India. He has not only brought about significant policy changes, but also through various programs and schemes directly touch the lives of every Indians. There is hardly any aspect of governance 
which he has not touched. He is trying hard to bring transformative changes not only in the Indian economy, but also pushing for a social transformation and an inclusive growth. Yes, through several innovative schemes and their effective implementations given a strong push to industrial and economic development of India. Schemes like Atmanirbhar Bharat, Digital India, Startup India have acted as an economic multiplier and have not only created endless business and manufacturing opportunities, but have also created millions of direct and indirect jobs. The Prime Minister's equally strong focus on a social factor, agriculture economy, and underdeveloped areas of the country with a safety net for the poor has ensured that the growth is inclusive and a sustainable. His social scheme like a Swachh Bharat, Jandan Yodhna, direct benefit transfer, and Ayushman Bharat, and many others have brought transformative changes in India. Now, if you take a look at what you've said, I know that uh, you've faced a lot of uh, criticism on this particular front, but the other areas as well, whether you look at Australia, Sri Lanka, the investments you've made, even in India, there have been a lot of agitations, criticisms against you. You had to weather all this term the storm that had been created. What is your view or reaction to all these things? Raj, this is a really very interesting question. See, Gautam Adani is a product of a democratic India. Protest, criticism, and allegations are all essential parts of a vibrant democracy. In fact, they defined the democracy. I'm a firm believer that our democracy has given us economic freedom and its opportunity. And we all have benefited from it. Now, we cannot complain and do cherry picking about other aspects of democracy which have their own functional values within the boundary of law. You would appreciate that we are in the infrastructure sector, which is the most difficult space to work in. I face such challenges many times. I have a very open mind towards any criticisms. For me, the message has always been more important than the messenger. Hmm. I always introspect and try to understand the other's point of view. I'm conscious that neither am I perfect nor am I always right. Every criticism gives me an opportunity to improve myself. Now, you were talking about the criticism that you had to face from various quarters. You said it's democratic. And yet, you never gave up. 
Is that part of the Adani culture? Yes. Giving up has never been a part of Adani's culture. Over the years, the group has developed a strong and professional team with an endless energy and a problem solving approach. We are always looking at solutions. Having honed my skills in such a dynamic democracy like India, my group and I both are confident that we can deliver and do business in any part of the world. I have faced adversity and crisis from my childhood. Each of this occasion has taught me several valuable lessons and made me stronger. It is for this reason that I always tell my team, never waste a crisis. And may I add, you always seem to say, never waste an opportunity. And I see you're betting big on solar and green hydrogen. What makes you so confident that you'll make these units viable or the investments viable, given the fact that even in green hydrogen, there's several hurdles, whether it is in, in terms of uh, the land availability, for st the storage, the technology for green technology, including the fuel cells, what makes you so confident that these will work and you invested big in them? See, green energy is a very close to my heart. And energy transitions is not only a huge business opportunity, but also a responsibility to our future generations. The government of India has brought a very attractive production link incentive scheme which has made the green hydrogen business viable and attractive. In fact, I'm very confident that with this enabling support will not only meet domestic demand, but soon become a green hydrogen exporters. Now, I know first generation entrepreneurs face difficulties. There is Dhirubhai Ambani that had to do that. You are a first generation entrepreneur. Who is your mentor? Who do you look up to? Dhirubhai Ambani is a source of inspiration for millions of entrepreneurs in India. He has shown how a humble man without any backing or resources and against all odds can not only set up a world-class business group but also leave a legacy. Being a first generation entrepreneur and having a humble beginning, I am deeply inspired by him. Now switching topics a bit and coming more to looking at ahead and the reality, what is the state of the Indian economy and how do you see India's growth in the year ahead? In our 75 years of independence, it took us 58 years to get to our first trillion dollars of GDP. 12 years to get to the next trillion. And just five years for the third trillion. But now 
if you look at our pace of social and economic reforms i see india adding a trillion dollars to its gdp every 12 to 18 months within the next decade i'm very optimistic about the growth and a prosperity of india this optimism comes from the fact that in 2050 we will have a young india of 1.6 billion people with a median age of 38 will also have the world's largest middle class population this demographic dividend combined with the largest middle class will spur growth and prosperity in india and making it a 30 trillion dollar economy so clearly this century belongs to india i know we are running out of time and this is my final question to you many experts think and i'm wanting to you to look ahead many experts think that 2023 we may see a global recession what is your views on that see raj i am a born optimist and never lose hope i recall that many pundit had painted a similar groom scenario for india during the 2008 global financial crisis but india was successful in beating the predictions i am optimist that the next union budget would provide a great opportunity to address all these concerns a strong focus on a capital expenditure employment spending on social infrastructure and social security will help in facing the global headwinds of its recessions and india will emerge more stronger on this optimistic note uh, gautam bhai thank you very much for this interview and let us hope 2023 brings us a lot more joy a lot more opportunities and makes india greater thank you very much and congratulations once again for being made india today magazine's newsmaker of the year 2022 Thank you thank you Raj thank you for giving me this opportunity